Thank you very much indeed, uh, Dr. Michelle Anderson, for this fascinating uh, talk and deeply inspiring. Thank you. Uh, now, let's open the floor. I want to ask uh, everyone, if you have any question, don't hesitate to use the chat room below to write your questions right away. Um, otherwise, I open the floor, whoever wants to ask a question to Dr. Anderson, uh, please uh, go ahead. Well, I know sometimes our audience is shy, so please really reflect on it, uh, post your questions. And I want them to, because uh, it's so precious to have you here, Michelle, uh, some key insights uh, of your talk uh, are, I think, important also for us for the lessons we have to learn now. We are in times of crisis. Mm -hmm. And we also want not just to look back, but to learn something. Uh, many of us are deeply challenged you know, due to the pandemic. It's a troubled time. So reflecting on your deep you know, research of this encounter between East and the West, appreciating beauty, what you think are the key lessons we can learn for today for each one of us here or those who watch the video after that? May just to kick off uh, this, what do you think? Yeah, well, I think one of the, the key points is the way that Castiglione was able to listen. Uh, he didn't always take action or jump in, but he took time to listen and reflect. Uh, on the interiority of the, the emperor's desires, uh, the emperor's longings, um, and to build a real relationship instead of defending policies or defending doctrines. Um, he was willing to listen and find meeting points of commonality. And I think that says a lot about what we need to be doing today. Wonderful. So now I have a question from Father Fernando to you, uh, who thanks you very much and wants to know about the last years of Brother Castiglione in Beijing. Would you know anything about the last years of Castiglione in Beijing? Well, I do know that he died here in Beijing and um, he was offered, he was given a, a very honorable funeral procession uh, in the streets of Beijing. And of course, he's buried here at the, he was buried at the cemetery uh, where the 60 missionaries' uh, tombs are, are located. Even today, we can visit the, the, the burial place of Castiglione, although, of course, um, his remains are no longer there. Um, but his memory is preserved there, and it's one of my favorite places to visit here in Beijing. I may compliment just a detail of his contemporary, the, the Swiss brother, mm -hmm. uh, Franz Stadlin, as a clock maker. He was incapacitated in his last years. He had a stroke. Mm -hmm. and, but again, he also was very much appreciated. The, the emperor gave him a, a large sum for his funeral. But it's also very, I think, an excellent question sometimes these last years uh, can be particularly a uh, struggle. So thank you, uh, Father Fernando, for this uh, question. And I think those, those questions are deeply meaningful also because they bring out the human condition, the human nature of these, these missionaries. We seem to think that they trudged through and did great things, but they had a very difficult everyday life uh, and they met challenges and they met the, the, the suffering of people around them as well and their own suffering and they worked through their own suffering uh, continuing in the work that they did to the to the end of their lives to the end of their mission here in China it's um, deeply admirable and feel also welcome not just to post your question on the chat room. You can jump in, so to speak. You unmute yourself 
show your appreciation for this brilliant talk and ask a question, please. Feel, feel free. So who is, uh, has the courage to jump in? Michelle? Yes. This is Mike, Mike Mark. Oh, hello, Mike. Hi, how are you? Your yes, voice. I enjoy your talk very much. Thank uh, you. Uh, can I uh, ask you a question about, I mean, we, we, we know that uh, those uh, judges, when they, uh, when they were in the uh, palace, actually, uh, the uh, emperors or the uh, palace uh, really appreciate their talents in, in, in many different aspects. But I, I'd like to know uh, whether they would any, have, have any success in delivering their religious message or they create any religious impacts at all during their uh, period. Well, there definitely were converts to the faith. Um, and, and I read recently that even down to um, the Empress Dowager Cixi, that, that she read the Bible. I was uh, quite surprised to, to hear that. And of course, in the palace grounds, which I have to say, Mike, you know so well, I, I, and for the rest of the audience, I, I can say that Mike Ma has written one of the seminal works on the collections of the Palace Museum. Um, it's really a magnificent uh, uh, volume and I can highly recommend it. So Mike, you're also familiar with that very beautiful chapel uh, where the uh, mother of the emperor um, went for her prayer just directly across from her private apartment or her private section of the, the, the palace grounds. Uh, and I would like to think that, that the Jesuits, the seven Jesuits that were living inside the uh, palace grounds in Beijing uh, also most likely used that for their own um, prayer services. I don't have any evidence of that, but um, given that it was set up as a chapel and it was designed so that pieces could be moved in and out and it could, have, could be re restructured, reformatted, um, when I'm there, it's a place I like to visit also. Um, mm. I like to think that I'm walking in their footsteps. Let me see. Yeah, thanks. Mm. Any other questions? More, more well, most welcome. Yes, I would like to ask, do we know anything about the process by which Castiglione acquired the way to paint in the Chinese way? Did he have teachers or did we just learn by copying? Uh, I was wondering. Well, I would like to think that he learned in the very Jesuit way, the Ignatian way of sharing. Um, and so in the school of Castiglione, I believe that he was learning and teaching at the same time, acquiring knowledge, acquiring understanding. We know that one of the first things that he studied was this five point perspective. And perspective, of course, is so very important, not only in painting, but of course, in understanding what is going on in the scene. So uh, I, I do believe that his, his Ignatian practices contributed to his ability to see the larger picture and uh, integrate himself into the scene through the eyes of the other, the other individuals around him, the other artists that he was working with. I believe that it was a very collaborative process. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hans, for your question. You can see that his style developed uh, dramatically from the time that he, he left uh, Europe, left Genova, uh, and, and then on to Coimbra. In Coimbra, he was painting uh, images of the family, of the, the, ro the royal family. Uh, and he actually had to stay longer in Coimbra to complete the, the royal family portraitures before he could come, on, come along to, to China, which was very frustrating for him. That's all documented. So if you look at the image that he painted first in, in Genova um, of... of uh, Tobias and Raphael. And then we look at the school of Castiglione to the right, 
and those images of the 12 beauties and also the magnificent landscape scenes uh, and things that he created for the, the mother of the Qianlong Emperor, we see that there's a very dramatic development and adaptation to his new surroundings, which is also a, a hallmark of his uh, missionary success. I, I wonder of course would su supplement it because I, for me, Yuan Mingyuan is my favorite park. I was there well over a hundred times, you know, because I was working close by. So I would very much like to ask you. So in Chinese, Yuan Mingyuan means uh, the park of brilliant splendor. Now you come also from a very profound understanding of Ignatian spirituality, and we have coined the talk of spiritual friendship. Now, what would you suggest? What makes a life, as so says a lesson for us, a perfect and brilliant? See, complete trust, complete trust, and that is exactly what Castiglione had when he came to China. And I think that was the idea behind that very that first painting of the uh, Tobias putting his trust in God and following the angel, walking with an angel, uh, which probably got Castiglione through some very difficult situations and very difficult times. And always looking for the good, looking for God, and even in the darkest situations, you know, that that uh, cornerstone of Ignatian spirituality, I think, was very central to Castiglione's work and his life here in China. It's a brilliant answer. It could be a wonderful uh, kind of <laughs> final insight, but still, I, I, I want to insist, feel welcome is a unique chance we have all to interact uh, with Michelle, uh, and it's brilliant this, this appeal to complete trust. I, I very much like that. Uh, but still, uh, feel free either to post your question on the chat room or jump in with your so question. I would also like to invite questions, particularly around this idea of the Rui scepter, which I have, I have also sitting a sculpted Rui on my desk. I think it's a really interesting image. So the Ruyi became a gift uh, that the Qianlong Emperor gave uh, quite widely to, to guests. Um, but the Ruyi with the blossoming uh, Lixing uh, uh, fungi mushroom at the top uh, was very special because this really was the symbol of um, an auspicious time, an auspicious season. And I shared those images of St. Joseph with his blossoming staff. And of course, Maria with the blossoming lilies. Um, and so I wonder what you think of that idea of the inspiration of the Rui Scepter uh, in these images of the most beautiful women of the Imperial Palace, particularly this one, this chosen woman. The um, oracle phrase for Ru Yi is actually a kneeling woman listening to lips. She's listening to either words or music of inspiration. And the second oracle character in Ru Yi is, uh, is a preacher, actually, or a speaker or a teacher. It's um, the figure, a male figure, clearly a very male figure um, with genitalia to, to denote that it's a male. Um, and he is, he has his hands up in praise. It's very clear. And I think it's such a beautiful mingling of the woman listening to the word and the preacher teacher um, at her side, working together for the will of God, for the Ru Yi, your will, your will be done. And that's long, that comes long before Christianity. It's as if the oracle was waiting for the word. Last chance, anybody might to seize this opportunity to ask a question. Otherwise, really thank you, Michelle, very, very much indeed. So many insights have gone into uh, your talk. Uh, Michelle, I don't know if you want to uh, share a, a last, uh, last insight. Well, 
So, my my final insight is is just warm gratitude to you, Stefan, and for the very good work that you're doing in promoting art and culture as part of the faith tradition uh, and the very good work of the Matteo Ricci Institute. It's really been an honor to be included in your ongoing work, and I'm very grateful. Thank you for letting me share these ideas with you and with this distinguished public uh tonight thank you very much yes so uh thanks again very much indeed uh, michelle and also thanks for this very positive encouraging feedback we got from this distinguished audience one also who especially greets you was quoted uh, many times uh, who could not be here because of uh, his teaching obligation pro pro <coughs> professor francesco bostilla mm wants okay. to convey his greetings to you, Michelle, and everybody here. He has certainly done extensive research on this topic. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so thanks, uh, uh, everybody, and uh, all the very best. Goodbye.